Well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV on Playframe, and welcome back to Shadowbringers once again. We're feeling a little more settled into the Crystarium at this point, and now it is time we venture out into the first and start trying to track down our Scion friends who have apparently been living here for some while. And I think I've decided who it is we're going to go search for first. Because we do have the option. You can do this or this quest chain in any order you want. But uh, let's start with Alphano. He's been here longer. The Crystal Exarch is eager for you to meet with Alphano. Me too. You will visit Alphano and Colusia then. Excellent. As I mentioned, your destination is an island off the west coast, so you will need a mount capable of making the journey. Here is a letter of introduction. Present it to Zem Jinmai, the Master of Beasts at Temenos Rookery, and he will take care of you. When you see Alphano, be sure to pass on my warmest regards. I will do that thing. Let's go get ourselves a ride. So the rookery, I believe, would be up top, kind of around there. Hard to get an angle on it, but sort of right up in this upper corner. So let's warp our way up. Assuming I have the right spot. I don't. Different spot. That's the actual rookery. The one that says Tomanos Rookery. Easy mistake. <clears throat> Anyway, welcome to the Rookery. And there's Zel Guanla Zel Guanlao. This is or Zel Guanleo. Sorry, I don't don't know how to say your name. You're a slightly different looking uh lizard folk. Amalja. Right. It's kinda cool that they're just part of the uh Crystarium society here. I guess there's Bigger problems going on. <laughs> Makes sense that a lot of folks would kind of all ally together. Must be nice. Sort of. In some ways. This isn't the right quest. What am I what am I doing? What's going what's with my energy today? Nice to meet you, sorry. <clears throat> We're absorbing a lot of information here. You can't blame Dermot for getting a little disoriented. We'll find our feet. Your face is unknown to me. What business have you at my rookery? A uh, letter of introduction addressed to Zem Jinmai, which I believe is you, and signed by the Crystal Exarch, who I believe is your boss, sort of. <clears throat> signed by the Exarch, no less. Yes, I can provide you with an Amaro for passage to Colusia. I will pick you out a friendly whelp. Thank you. And Amaro, you say. I'm used to hearing Chocobo in these sentences, but an Amaro. That's right. Mounts like my gray friend over there are a common sight in these parts. Which gray friend are we? Oh, that one over there. Kind of cute. But I gather you hail from further afield. More accustomed to Chocobos, perchance. I hear there are a few places where they ride little else. Hmm. Seeing as you are plainly unaccustomed to riding Amaro, I think it best I accompany you on this flight myself. Any Zun worthy of the name could do it, of course, but the Exarch sent you to me. Ensuring you arrive safely is my responsibility. Gather your things and meet me at the Amaro launch. One of the junior tamers will attend to you while I ready the mounts. Thank you, I appreciate that. Given my sense of direction, it's kind of garbage today. Seems best that I have a little bit of supervision on this first trip. Now up to the MRO launch. I was just getting ahead of myself is all. So here we are. And hey, we can go ahead and get ourselves acquainted with the local mount travel person. Looking to procure yourself an MRO, then I reckon you've come to the right place. One second, if you would. And there we have it. I've added you to our register. Pray, come back whenever you're in need of a mount. Will do. 
Amara are pretty cute. I like him. It's like halfway between... Sort of like Vulture and Camel. Very good. Anyway. You want to fly in Amaro to Calusia? Well, I suppose if Master Jinmai is going with you... No, wait here, please. The Master should be along with the mounts shortly. You can now travel to Calusia. Speak with the aspiring Amaro Tamer to fly to the island. You can also use your Aether Compass to assist with locating Aether Currents in new regions. The Aether Compass can be found under Collection in the Duty section of the main menu. Right, we can't fly out here anymore. Nothing but traveling around on foot with Quayfriend and Amaro for us until we get all those Aether Currents. So it goes. The whistling breeze mute, the pounding surf frozen. Time itself takes a breath. At light's edge, all is perfectly still. The world captured in a painting, locked in a moment. Music, faint and fleeting, drifts coastward on the lifeless air. And in the distance, beyond the broken earth, a city beckons. And here we are. In our first, eh, second, technically, new explorable area out here. Purple Tree Land was technically the first. We are arrived. This is Cracked Shell Beach on the eastern coast of Calusia. You should be safe here for the present. Compared to the mainland, Sin Eater attacks are far less prevalent, and the native beasts are not any more dangerous than elsewhere. It is the people you should be wary of. Spy you that city in the distance. That is Yulmar, the island's main settlement. It rivals the Crystarium in scale, and was once an ally in our battle against the Abominations. For years, the Ulmoran elite have fancied themselves the masters of what remains of our broken world. They've gone so far as to offer the leaders of other settlements their protection, if we bend the knee. But to say their ideals are questionable would be putting it mildly. The Crystarium is one among many who resist their heavy-handed authority, and while we're not at war, our relationship with Ulmor is strained at best. It may be wise to conceal your ties with the Exarch during your stay here especially in the vicinity of the city. I appreciate the advice. I am glad we understand each other. Now, the Exarch has instructed me to divulge a secret that should make finding your friend a good deal easier. Listen closely. I'm a-listening. So eager to check up on our boy. See how he's doing. Whatever Zem Jinmai has to tell you, he plainly deems it worthy of your undivided attention. And that you have. Tell me. If you head south along the coast, you will eventually come to a fisherman's shack. A friend of the Crystarium lives there, a man who goes by the name of Ibor. Ibor keeps an eye on everything that happens in Calusia, and will be able to point you in the right direction. Just hand him a sprig of time. That'll let him know you can be trusted. Here, this should be enough. Find your friend. I'll stay here with the Amaro till you're ready to return. I appreciate that. Hadn't really given a lot of thought to how I was getting back. Southward we go. So, some fun little uh, bits to note out here. For one, there's a lot of uh, enemies that have just sort of like a lot of the standard enemies we'll find out in the world have some pretty different designs than the sort of stuff that we're used to uh, seeing. Some of them will be, like, just familiar designs from other Final Fantasies. Like, this Hobgoblin looks very much like old-school uh, Final Fantasy Goblin-type designs that you'd run into, which I quite like. 
and even this area itself does seem kind of like vaguely familiar. The windmills we saw on the way in, these coasts, some of the foliage, it almost kind of has this feel of like an alternate universe, Lenosha. A little bit, right? Like all these cliffs. A lot more dead and relatively yellow, but... Kind of similar. Very similar terrain. That enormous cliff being one exception, I suppose. Pardon me? I think I'm a little too high level for y'all to bother me, but even so. Here's the shack. And you must be Ibor. Hello. What you after? Fish? Crab? Think I've got an eel in a barrel somewhere if you have a taste for him. Well, I got some lake thyme, a fragrant herb commonly found growing along the floodplains of the source. All yours. Eat hearty. Ooh, I do love a bit of thyme. Chuck some in the pan and it's like a bloody festival of flavor. Now, what is it I can do for you? Can't say as there's been any major upsets to report these past few weeks. I am looking for the boy. Alphano, eh? Aye, I know the one. Our young champion of the downtrodden. Yulmore's richer than all of Norvrand put together, but it's a different story for them as live outside the city. Most spend every waking moment just trying to stay alive, which makes your friend's dedication to helping others stand out all the more. I, I can hazard a guess as to where he is now, get a message to him, but you'll need somewhere quiet to meet, away from prying eyes. Make for Stilltide. Now that's a fishing village just up the path there. You're looking for a rundown excuse for a tavern the locals call the Leaky Keel. Wait there, and I'll see that Alphano joins you. That sounds great. Ah, finally! I believe this is the place we are looking for. Let's go ahead and attune as well. Pardon me. Yeah, these etherite crystals that have sort of like, they're sort of like light bleached from the bottom. Kind of like, seems like they maybe didn't always look that way, but it's a cool, cool, unique look that I really like. Make it a little easier for ourselves to get back here in the future. Very good. Okay. Hey, Moogle. With a blue palm, that's different, I think. <laughs> than what we're used to seeing. It's fun seeing all of the sort of alternate universe differences. Here's the leaky keel. Lovely. Hello. Yes, dear? Buy a drink or out you go. The seats are for paying customers. Yes, you look so busy. I just got here. This your first time in a tavern? It's customary to buy a drink if you mean to loiter. What will you be having? Oh, come on. Um... Huh, what's your drink of choice, Dermon? You know, we're in a kind of like... Maybe not entirely safe. Unfamiliar location. Better keep the head clear. A fine choice, and what'll you be paying with? Money. Well now, these are exotic. Where'd you come by coins like that? I'm sorry, dear, I don't doubt they have value but I don't have a touchstone to test their purity, and I'm not about to go begging for one from the neighbors. So we'll just have to come to some other arrangement. Oh, here's an idea. There's a common to the north where we grow our vegetables, but lately the pests have been eating more of them than we have. Uh, what do you say to a bit of extermination work? I want you to squash any vermin you find, then visit the caretaker and give him an earful from me for sleeping on the job. He'll be in the old silo next to the fence, snoring like as not. 
do that for me, and you can laze about here as long as you like. Well, okay. This is kind of nostalgic. Doing small jobs. I accept. Also, probably couldn't hurt to shake off the Dark Knight rust. We've been samurais and monks and red mages for quite a while. This must be the spot. What sort of vermin am I uh, to be dealing with? Out of curiosity. Oh. Refreshingly mundane. <laughs> and not gigantic. After so long in Alamigo, where it's all big bugs all the time. I appreciate this. Good work with the big sword, Derman. Well, relatively big sword, you know. There we go. Sort it out. Now. Where's this other person to whom we're supposed to give a telling off? Hey, you in here? No response. Maybe you need to knock louder. Ahem. <clears throat> Are you in here? No response. Perhaps the occupant is hard of hearing. Hey! You hear a faint squeaking from the room beyond. Time to burst in and save the day, brave adventurer. No one is home, and judging by the lack of furniture, they haven't been for some time. The gnawed scraps of vegetables on the floor suggest rats have taken up residence in their absence. Huh. Okay, rats, as new tenants, I leave this farm in your care. Please handle the pests. Okay, job done. Let's report. I return. Job is done. You have new employees. Welcome back, dear. What did that good-for-nothing caretaker have to say for himself? Gone. Huh. <laughs> Must have left to join the rest of the hopefuls. In Gate Town. Outside Yulmore? You don't have a clue what I'm talking about, do you? And there I was, thinking you were another dreamer. Well, never mind all that. Take a seat wherever you like, dear. You've more than earned it. I'll even throw in another drink. On the house. Ah, well, thank you. And how is business today, Mistress Theva? Oh, frenetic. Look, I have a new customer. Well, hello. Tis good to see you, my friend. Same to you. The barley seeds you wanted. They should produce a better harvest than the last. What, just like that? Oh, well, for no, you really are a dear. Well, I'd best be tidying up some of those empty shacks before the pests move in. Keep an eye on the place while I'm out, eh? I'm afraid you're much too late for that. See if they'll pay rent, though. It seems an age since last we spoke. Not since the prisoner exchange in Doma. And Yotsuyu. It has been even longer for me, of course, if you count the days I've spent here. But the time has only added to the relief I feel seeing you safe and well. I was more worried about you. We thought we'd lost you. Kind of a couple of times. 
Both pretty good responses, though. Huh. Alizé said much the same thing. I don't think I've ever had such a scolding. Oh, I bet. But I believe an exchange of news is in order. Come, tell me of your arrival and all that came before. I see. But the Exarch and Alizé told me what they knew of events. But I had stubbornly clung on to the hope that all-out war might yet be avoidable. And poor Tataru. She must be sick with worry. We must endeavor to return as soon as we may. It would be nice to bring her good tidings for a change. Boy, you said it. But before we bid this world farewell, we must first ensure that it is not rejoined to the source. We must prevent the Eighth Umbral Calamity. Orianger's vision of the future has, I fear, every chance of coming true. By his description, the catalyst for the Calamity was a formless and deadly weapon employed by the Garlean Empire. Which can only mean one thing. Black Rose. Gaius was telling you the truth. When we were on the trail of the Asians, we saw evidence that the gas was being manufactured once more. Gaius was adamant that the project had been scrapped, but so long as there are wars to be waged, there will always be those determined to win by any means. And thus simply destroying the existing stores of Black Rose would do little to alter fate's course. In that sense, our involuntary journey here to the first was something of a boon. Together with the Exarch, we've developed a theory as to how we believe the rejoining will be set in motion. I'm sure Orianger himself will cover the subject in more detail. Oh, I am sure he will. But I can tell you the process requires that both worlds, the Source and the First, be facing an existential threat. One being Sin Eaters, of course. They are a menace that I would dearly love to remove, and not just to avert a calamity. I may be a stranger to this world, but I will not stand idly by and let innocent people be slaughtered. That is what brought me to the gates of Yulmor. Ignoring its pretensions as a kind of capital city to what remains of the world, it is nonetheless a center of power and authority. If any solutions are to be found, I believe our search should begin there. What say you, old friend? Hungry for another adventure? Yeah, why not? And so we take to the road once more. Missed you, buddy. Well, there's one friend found. So, what are we doing? Alphano is ready to take to the road once more. Assuming you have no objections, let us make our way directly to the city outskirts. If we time our arrival just right, you may be lucky enough to see why I have yet to set foot in Yulmore, despite my best efforts to do so. Come, from here we must head west, and then cross a small bridge. Right behind you. Love the poncho, by the way. Alrighty. Westward. You know, not to diminish the difficulties that everyone here in the first is uh, dealing with every day, but gotta say, it's pretty nice having... I beg your pardon. I was going to say, it's pretty nice having ideal lighting conditions for doing this series. Kind of around the clock. 
Maybe not in every single part of the world, but having it not be nighttime, <laughs> kind of ever, sure helps me a lot. In one specific way, I suppose. What is the weather condition out here? Anyway, everlasting light. Oof. I do have to commend them, though. They've really managed to make light feel like a sickening sort of plague-type thing, like a really scary, unpleasant thing to be flooded with. Just these bleached landscapes, kind of sickly yellow sky. We spend so much time being threatened by darkness in these Final Fantasy stories. They've really found a good way to make light also seem threatening and uncomfortable. Calusia seems peaceful, does it not? Almost familiar. I had a similar impression of the Crystarium. Even in this distant world, people are much the same. <sighs> to think that whenever a calamity struck the source, a reflection such as this one, with all of its culture and history, was being erased from existence. No! Get away from me! Over there. Quickly, someone's in trouble. Right behind you. Let's move. Excuse me, large chameleons, iguanas, whatever. Sorry, you're... Boy, those are big teeth. Sorry, I have other problems right now. Alpha no? Yeah. I'll just be a moment, manic madame. Oh, thank the fates. You Look out! Hey! Our first Sin Eater. No, thank you. Go down already. Hey, I'll just hit you with this fancy flippy move a few times. Okay. You keep your danger puddles to yourself. Shaking off that Dark Knight rust. We are more of a tank now, so damage output is not our biggest strength, but we are much harder to kill. Which has its perks. Oh, my poor heart. Thank you, young sir. Oh, there you are. In my haste, I've lost my bearings. But I see you have the situation well in hand. Fine work. Are you all right, madam? Just a few bruises from where I fell. Nothing compared to what was in store for me before this brave soul came to my rescue. I honestly thought I was done for. My feet are not as swift as they once were, and I knew there was no one left to hear me scream. Not that I let that stop me. <sighs> I should probably leave my old house behind and queue up outside Yulemore with the rest of them. Doubt those fancy lords and ladies would welcome an old crone like me. Still, even a shack near the gate has to be safer than staying here. One would hope. Either way, I suggest you avoid wandering alone, lest you make the Sin Eater's task any easier. Thank you, again. You saved my life. Now, I'm sure a strapping lad like you has little to fear, but I wouldn't linger long in this place. There's not to be had here but cobwebs and memories. Tis as the lady says. Many in these parts have abandoned their homes to live in Yulmore's shadow. Should the Sin Eaters descend upon this region, there are precious few with the strength to fight them off. Speaking of which, what have you been told of these monsters? A brief history, then. T'was not long after the flood swallowed the better part of the world that the Sin Eaters first appeared, some beastly, some beauteous. Yet, regardless of their form, 
all seem incapable of speech, and all are driven by the same insatiable appetite for mortal ether. They are predators, and we are their prey. Colusia suffers from far fewer attacks than most regions, but even so, the list of Sin Eater's victims grows longer by the day, a tragedy without end. Still, we have won a small victory this time, at least. Now, shall we press on? We need to return to where the road forks and follow the path that leads west. Lead the way. Pardon me, large iguana. Kind of cute. The roundness of them anyway. Despite the big teeth. Alpha no. Goodness. That's a big old thing. Yee. But we draw closer to you more. Which does look rather pretty, despite everything. Ah, there you are. And here we are. Let's get familiar with the place. That gate up ahead is known as the Open Arms, and Yulmore itself lies beyond. This, meanwhile, is the aptly named Gate Town. The dwelling place of the many desperate souls who hope to be chosen to live in the city proper. Ah, I thought I recognized you. Brought a new friend, eh? <laughs> I'll bet you got a trick or two up your sleeve. Maybe even three. Care to show me? I beg your pardon. He's not here to compete. Leave him be. What? I was only making conversation. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention please! to our hopeful petitioners, one and all. Yulmore extends its warmest regards. Let it be known that a lady of distinction wishes to dine on Fish Divine. We seek a master culinarian who can guarantee seafood perfection. Dazzle the matron with your delicious dishes and life in the city will be yours to enjoy. Even on days when fish is not on the menu. Who among you will answer the call? Name yourself or another, we may not at all. Fish, is it? Was there anyone? What about that girl? Do you recall how I said Yulmore was a centre of power and authority? Well, that is not the only reason for its fame. It is also known as the City of Final Pleasures. The noble and the wealthy who survived the flood gathered here to live out the rest of their days in decadent abandon. A poor man could sooner pass through the Ivan Needle than Yulmore's gates. The only way the common folk can enter this perverted paradise is if they fulfill the whim of one of the privileged, and so they are picked over like market produce. Ah, just like home. Well, 
not be throwing this one back. Having seen your all too obvious charms, we welcome you with open arms. Come, join us in the city of splendor and live out your life in an ecstasy of endeavor. Just look at those expectant faces. What could you possibly be waiting for? Well, well, what have we here? An extra share of Mio to celebrate our newest resident. For you. Ah, oh, hello. Enjoy. Thank goodness. Meal is a foodstuff which Yulmore routinely doles out to the people of Gate Town, and apparently a staple for its citizens as well. Many here rely on it to survive in these times of scarcity, yet the whole arrangement just seems... Well, let us just say it leaves a bad taste in my mouth. I do enjoy how those two jesters kind of echo, vaguely, faintly, the uh, jester pair from Final Fantasy IX, Zorn and Thorn. But not in any direct literal sense, just there being two jesters with a knack for rhyming in their speech. One red, one blue. It's cute. Anyway. Now you understand why my attempts to enter the city have thus far come to naught. The dubious privilege of residency must be won via a contest with ever-changing rules. They say this policy has been in place for the past two decades, ever since Yulmore's current ruler came into power. Yet, from what I've seen, it does more harm than good. Not only does it distract people from our shared struggle against the Sin Eaters, it robs them of their self-sufficiency. I've tried to propose ways they could improve their lot, but... My words invariably fall on deaf ears. The attitude is so entrenched now, I worry that... Well, mayhap you should take a turn around Gate Town and judge the situation for yourself. You know, maybe I will. Ask around, get acquainted. There's somebody back here closer to the entrance. You there. I believe we met earlier. Still here, are you? Can't blame you for wanting a slice of Yulmore's pie. And if you ask me, you should ditch that sour-faced brat and make a home for yourself here. Gate Town's not much to look at, aye, but at least it's safe. And the meal's the best thing I've ever tasted. Well, at least the food they're offering is decent. Doesn't seem like y'all have much else going on for you. Let's see who else we can find. Hello? Anyone open to chatting? Or discussing what's going on here? A large pot bubbles over the flame. Pale chunks, meal, you realize, float in the otherwise plain broth. Found different ways to prepare it, huh? Resourceful. Anyone else? Ah, here we go. Just look at it. Can you imagine a more beautiful city? Every day I dream of the life that awaits me inside those walls. Oh, will they ever pick me? Yeah, not much to do out here but look and dream, I guess. Well, I've learned a bit. 
You've seen what Gate Town has to offer. These people can no longer fend for themselves. They've become dependent on handouts of meal and believe Yulmore is the answer to all their woes. Yet no matter how I frame my encouragement, they seem unwilling, nay, unable to conceive of any other way of life. Hmm. Does seem we have our work cut out for us out here. If we're to be helpful. But we're going to have to start tackling that next time. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you next week for some more Shadowbringers. Take care until then. Have a good weekend. Bye!